everyone, Sabrina here from Scrappy Tales Crafts, and today I'll be showing you part three of the Hero Arts June 2018 card kit. So for card number six, I wanted to create a postcard. So I'm using a die from memory box that cuts out postage stamps. And I'm gonna use two of these small squares and I stamped see you soon on one of them. And I'm gonna color that with some purple ink. And then on my second stamp, I will cut the numbers 25 as if it was a 25 cent postage stamp, even though I think now they're 50 cents. So I guess this particular postcard is going to be from the 80s, the 90s, I don't know. It's going to be an old postcard. But yeah, I just sort of offset the numbers. I thought that would be fun. And then I'm going to color this one in pink. And then that white you're seeing under the two, that was my glue that leaked out. So I'm going to improvise and just spray some water on both of that both of those stamps to make it look intentional. And then it's going to add to the old look. So I was okay with doing that. I'm just placing it on my postcard to see what that will look like. And then I can move on and create my seam. So I used the three inks that came in the set. I didn't show all of the stamping just because you've seen it in part two and part one. So. And then I'm going to sprinkle some clear embossing powder over my ocean and then I will heat set it. And that's going to make it look shiny. So this card was inspired by the Polaroid I made in part two. I really liked how it looked like I took a picture while I was on vacation. So I thought it would be fun to make it look like I was sending a postcard from vacation. And instead of doing a sunset, with the dolphin. I'm going to do a twilight looking scene with the dolphin. Right now I just went over the ocean with my snow marker pen and when you heat set it it gives you that bumpy texture and to me it looks like splashes or white caps that you would see on a stormy ocean. So I did go over the dark areas with some of that pen too to make it look foamy. And then here I'm placing my ocean over my postcard just so I know where to trim it down and then I'm using my ocean to trim down my sand. That sand I made in part two that actually lasted me all ten cards and I'm taking a separate sheet of paper and that's going to help me create my scene. So first I'm going to glue down my sand and then I will glue down my ocean. And now I'm taking a half inch circle punch and I just placed it under my ocean and for the most part it stayed there. I didn't have to add any tape. Now I'm going in with my finger dauber and I'm placing some pink ink around the moon. I was going for a blood moon effect. They don't happen very frequently but they are really pretty and so that was what I was going for. And then this color is Broken China. And then going back in with my pink. And then this is Stormy Sky. And I will go back over the Stormy Sky with my Broken China. That's just going to help it blend a little bit better. Okay, so I took off that mask and I'm going to use my Copic markers and just add some random squiggles onto my moon with a gray marker. And then I didn't want to mess up the scene so I took my Misty and I will stamp that dolphin in black onyx ink. I'm going to emboss that little dolphin but first I will add a few islands next to it. So I add one to the left and one to the right. And then I believe I add a palm tree to the right island. Okay, and then I wanted 
some stars. So I'm going to take my puffy snow marker again and create little dots and that's what I will use to create my stars. And in some areas I added little X marks or like little dashes, I don't know. And I wouldn't do that in the end, I didn't really care for those, but it was okay, I did trim down a lot of this. But you can see when you heat it, it gets really bright white. But you could just use a white gel pen, that would be good too. So now I'm just trimming this down and then I'm going to take it to my paper trimmer and get the right sizing. I'm using a pencil to tell me where to cut. And there is my little scene. Now I'm going to place down my, post, uh, my postage stamps. And then I'm using a stamp set that came from la not last month. Um, I think it was the March kit. And I took the High Friend. You can see I also had the For a Great Friend. You can use that too. I kind of liked the shape of the High Friend. And then I just added greetings from my happy place underneath. And I used some pinks and purples to stamp that so that they could match my stamps. And then I wanted to add some arrows. I thought that would be really cute. If you wanted to, you could draw the lines that you would have on a postcard, but I was nervous that I would mess up, so I just left it. Now I'm going in with some pattern paper I thought I might want to use. I end up just using some blue paper that kind of matched the broken china that was in the sky. And then just like the Polaroid, I decided to tilt my postcard. I'm going to adhere everything with some ATG tape. And then I use my craft glitter glue for my postage stamps. And then I decided to pop my whole postcard up with some fun foam. And that's pretty much going to complete card number six. Like I said, I'm going to be selling the Polaroid and this postcard together because I thought it was it would be a cute set and I'm going to show you some close-ups here the distress inking looks a lot more vibrant in the photo so there it is really cute I love the colors on this one and I love that it matched the Polaroid card so for card number seven I wanted to create my own striped background so these are just some, I believe, quarter inch strips that I made with just some scraps. And then I'm going to take the spray that came in the kit and I'll spray my panel. And this spray dries really fast. I didn't even really need to use my heat tool on it. And then I'm going to peel off those strips. This is a really easy way of creating stripes. Here I'm just trying to figure out what I want to do because at this point I'm really unsure. So I decided to create another small scene. So that is some sand. I knew I wanted to use that circle so I moved it up. And now I'm creating my ocean with only the top two layers of the ocean layering stamp set. Uh, that's because I didn't have the kind of color that I wanted for the bottom layer. So I just used some paper that I liked. And then for the second layer, I used Teal Zeal and Memento. And then this last layer, I think, is the deep ocean that came in the kit. And then here I'm looking to see how I want to trim it, how short I want the ocean to be. And then again, I will glue that down right over the sand. And then... I'm taking the gray ink that came in the kit and also that, oh okay, so the third layer was actually nautical blue by Memento and I just stamped that second chair in the nautical blue. The sailboat is also in the gray and then I wanted some clouds which I'm going to stamp in the gray. And then off camera I did the second layer and some white embossing powder. And then I wanted 
um, a blue sky. So I took just whatever was left on my broken china sponge and placed that onto the seam. And then I'll use my circle die and cut everything out at once. And then I also cut my clouds and my sailboat and also my chair. So I placed it on my striped panel and I thought it looked kind of bland. It wasn't really popping out the way I wanted it to. And I felt like I needed to frame it somehow. So I came up with the idea of creating a porthole. So I thought that was really cute. So what I'm gonna do is I took two circle dies and I'm gonna cut out a ring and then I'm gonna add some acetate and then I'm using some 3-in-1 to attach my acetate and I chose some big chunky silver brads right now I'm going in with a pencil just to mark out where I want to punch the holes so that I can put in my brads I think this would be really cute if you did a white porthole with red brads or gold brads. I really liked the gray scheme that I had with this card, so that's why I chose to go with a silver, sort of an old looking porthole. Now I'm just going to place my brads in. And then there's my ocean scene I created. I'm going to take some ribbon. This is some brown and white twine. And I believe it's paper twine because it really holds its shape better than a ribbon would. So I'm not sure where I got that twine. I think I got it at like a garage sale somewhere. Here I'm placing my elements onto my porthole. I wanted to use that see you soon again because it fit perfectly and then I'm going to place my clouds around my sentiment and I thought it would be fun to pop up my sailboat and kind of make it look like it was a shadow box or I guess a shadow circle porthole thing I thought about putting the birds on but decided to keep it simple And since those brads put a lot of dimension on my ring, I had to put some foam tape on the places that the brads didn't hit so that it would be even on my card panel. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm just adding some random bits of foam. This is the double mounted foam that you saw in part two. Then I'm placing some glue on top of the brads to make sure that it adheres well. And then I thought about using two chairs, and now that I'm looking at it, it looks really cute with two, but I thought it might be a little too distracting, so I just opted to use that blue chair only. And then I added my brown bow to the top right. And that's going to complete that card. I'm just going to adhere it onto my card base and I think that porthole is adorable and it really framed that scene in nicely and the brads make it sort of look like a masculine card I think it would be perfect to give to a guy in your for card number eight I went back to the vacation theme so we took a picture on our vacation we sent a postcard from our vacation and now we are going to put picture frames on a wall from our vacation so for this picture I wanted to create a palm tree scene so I just placed some of that sand on the bottom and I will place an island that I stamped and die cut and then also a palm tree on top of that I decided to pop it up and I wanted it to have the same effect that the porthole card did and kind of make it look like a shadow box. Here I didn't have enough ocean so I sort of improvised. You can kind of notice it but I plan on putting that beach ball over it anyway so it wasn't a huge uh, notice. I'm going to take another moon that I punched out and going in with the same colors that I did 
for the sixth card, I'm going to create a blood moon with some broken china on the edges. This is actually the exact same scene, but in a smaller version. I'm just trying to figure out which dolphin I want to use. I took my advice that I set on part two and I decided to stamp and die cut a bunch of images. So I kind of like that because you can add whatever you want and you don't have to worry about stopping what you're doing to stamp things out. Um, here I'm going to pop up my dolphin and then I will add some stars with my puffy white marker again. I love how white it gets when you heat it. And I decided to use a pink frame for my dolphin. For this scene, I wanted some sailboats. So I had the same problem where I ran out of ocean. These are all just little scraps that I found on my desk. And I wanted to create a sunset, so I'm going in with some dried marigold. on the top left corner and then I will go in with some daffodil memento ink and blend that out. So I chose some sailboats. These were actually from my box card that I created in part one. So I had a lot of leftovers. I decided to pop up my two sailboats and then I glued down a cloud that will have an orange frame and I love the different. Now I'm trimming down some acetate. I wanted my picture frames to look like they had glass and I will attach my acetate with 3-in-1 glue. It's a nice strong adhesive and all these shaped dies were created with Daris dies. I try not to use too many extra supplies and the supplies that I do use um, I think most people might already have so okay what I did there was I placed my scene onto some white paper and trimmed around it that's just so that my foam tape has something to attach to here I'm going to trim it down a little bit and now I'm going to show you what it looks like because that dolphin has popped up it really looks like a shadow box now I'm going to my rectangle frame and I am using the double mounted foam tape I got from Uline. And since I used uh, single layered, I guess, foam tape on my sailboats and my dolphin and the palm tree, it really makes it look like a shadow box. There I'm just showing you how that one turned out. I think these are super cute. This one actually took me the longest. Even though it looks pretty simple, there's a lot of elements going on. And then if you count all the die cutting and stamping I had to do, this card did take quite a bit of time, but it is one of my favorites. Okay, I'm attaching my oval now. I thought about using a dark blue background but I really wanted it to look like they were maybe in an art gallery so I thought the white would make it look clean so I opted to go for white now I'm going to go in with my poke tool and then this is uh, sort of like a mouse pad and that's what I use to poke holes through and I'm taking some brown ribbon it kinda looks like burlap and I'm gonna use that to hang my frames from. And to do that, I took one end and taped it down with some scotch tape to the back of my picture frame. And then I also taped down the other end. Trimmed it down and then I took a yellow brad. And this was a little bit tricky because I wanted it to go through the ribbon and through the paper. So I sort of had to make a hole inside of my ribbon you don't have to do that, you can just glue down the ribbon, but I really wanted it to look like it was pinned on a wall, so that's why I did that. There I'm just giving the ribbon some a haircut because there was little threads going everywhere. And then I decided to put some tape behind my frame to permanently adhere that. I think it would be cute if you had them sort of hanging, but uh, I wanted my card to stay put, so... 
Now I'm going to my oval. This one was a little bit more tricky because it's really close on the top, so I didn't really have any much room, I guess, to spread that ribbon out. Okay, there I poked my hole through my ribbon, and then I went through my card panel. Added some tape and glued that down. And I used a green brad. All these brads were from my stash. Not sure where I got them. I know I got this ribbon from Michael's though. And this will be my last frame. I used a purple brad. Now I'm going to stamp my sentiment onto some yellow paper using black ink. And then I'm going to trim that down into a rectangle with my scissors. And I added it to my card base, but I didn't like how it looked flat, so I'm going to add that double mounted foam tape behind and make it even with those picture frames. Okay, and uh, I was going to glue it straight onto the card base, but for some reason, I don't like white on white. When I see other people do it, I think it's really pretty, but when I do it, for some reason, I just don't like it. So I did cut down some yellow paper, the same yellow paper I used for my sentiment, and that's going to cover my whole card base. And then I will glue down my panel, and that will complete card number eight. I really like how that one turned out. And here are some close-ups. I really just wanted to show the box, like the shadow box look. For card number nine, I'm going to create my own background again. So I'm using the two starfish that came in the kit and the sand embossing powder to stamp and emboss my background. Again, just like I did with the palm trees in part two, there's no rhyme or reason as to how I'm doing this. Just trying to fit in some starfish without overlapping them. I do start at one corner and make my way up to the opposite corner. And then once that's all filled in, I go back in with that small starfish and try to fill in wherever I feel like I need another one. And then after that, I'm just going to heat emboss my whole panel. And I like how that turned out, but I didn't know what I was doing at that point. So um, I decided to take that paper that came in the kit. I thought this side was really pretty. So I'm gonna cut out a circle with that. And I apologize, but I did not have the footage on how I created that circle in the center. But what I did was I took some sea grass, that was a die from my stash, and then I placed a red chair right on top of it and then I stamped out Enjoy the Beach Life. On the bottom of the circle, I added some sand, and then I also added a few shells that came in the sticker pack. Then I just added some ribbon behind that starfish panel. I will pop that up. Oh, and that ribbon is that brown and white twine, actually. And I thought that would be cute down there. I did pop up my circle. And that will complete card number nine. I'm sorry, that one was really quick. Um, but yeah, it was a pretty simple card to make. All right, for the last card, I had an idea of creating a heart in the sand. So first I did the ocean with the three inks that came in the kit. I did it off camera because you've seen me do it a few times now. Now I'm going to emboss the bottom part with sand. And then I'm heating it uh, below first because there's some bigger chunks of embossing powder that likes to fly away. So. I do heat it from the bottom first and then as always I take my snow pen and create those splashes okay 
And then I took a heart from my stash. This is a pink and main set. Here I missed a bit of sand in the corner, so I'm just adding some more Versamark, and I sprinkled more of that sand embossing powder down. And then I took some brown embossing powder and covered the heart with that. And then I decided to stamp out that Love Infinity from that same stamp set. It's called Hearts from Pink and Main. And then again, I heat set it from the bottom first and then the top. So I thought that was cute. It's sort of a romantic card, like you drew a heart in the sand. So to go along with that theme, I decided to do two chairs in the red. The red was obviously my favorite. And also this stamp was my favorite. I think I used it in, I don't know, was it like five out of the 10 cards I made? Maybe more than that. And then I added two starfish to either side. And I thought I would use that dark blue again, but I didn't. I kind of liked the lighter blue more. I did not pop that panel up, but I did add a lot of foam tape because it was warped. And then I'm just gonna add my blue panel onto my card base. And that's going to complete card number 10. So the last two, I'm sorry, they went a little bit quicker, but I wanted to spend a majority of the time on those three cards in the beginning that were a little bit more intensive. And, um, and yeah, so here's some pictures of some of the cards that I created. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please let me know which one was your favorite. And if you haven't yet already, go ahead and subscribe to my channel so you know any upcoming future videos that I post. All right, thanks for watching. Bye.